In this video, you'll learn what DocuSign in-person signing is and how the feature works. I'll also give you some examples of the most common workflows our clients streamline using this functionality. And we'll wrap up with the things you need to consider and know before you start using the in-person signing feature. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Sofian Saudi and I'm the founder of SolidSign Consulting. Since 2019, we've helped thousands of companies automate document related tasks in their sales, onboarding and recruitment workflows. To automate your documents, you will need templates, databases, and integrations, and that's exactly what we built for our clients. So if you're tired of fighting documents and manual tasks alone, you can find the link in the description of this video to book a strategy session with one of our consultants. And you haven't already, I strongly suggest that you download our free DocuSign Mastery and Automation Cheat Sheets. These will help you understand how to automate all your forms and document workflow and use DocuSign. Now let's go back to the topic of this video. Let's start with what in-person signing is and what it means. You've probably already sent an envelope if you're watching this video. And if that's the case, you'll most likely have chosen the option recipient needs to sign in your recipient workflow. When you use the needs to sign recipient action, you need to enter the name and email of the recipient you're sending a document to, right? Then the recipient receives the DocuSign invitation to review and complete the document by email. This is what's called remote signing. They call this remote signing because the recipient and the signer is receiving the document and completing the signing action away from you. In-person signing, however, helps you with signing workflows that happen when you, the sender of the document, or in physical presence of the signers, your recipients. An in-person signing session needs you, the sender, to host the signing session using your own computer or mobile device. For example, a sales rep visiting prospects at their home who needs to get a signature on sales contract. Using in-person signing, the sales rep can host the signing session directly on their iPad or laptop. So this means that the client will use the sales rep's own device to sign instead of theirs. In summary, the difference between in-person signer and remote signer or needs to sign is simply that the signer does not receive the DocuSign email notification inviting them to sign since they're using the device of the sender of the document who they are in the physical presence of. This streamlines the signature processes because the sales reps don't need to collect the email address of this prospect and the prospect doesn't need to access their email to find a DocuSign email invitation to complete the envelope. But apart from workflows where sales reps are in the physical presence of their prospects, other clients also use this feature when new hires need to complete their onboarding paperwork on site. Clients in the indication industry also use this feature with students who can complete all the enrollment paperwork directly from an iPad. But more generally speaking, businesses that receive their customers at the office also like to set up all their forms with in-person signing so that their customers can easily fill them out while they're there. Now, before telling you about the limitations of this feature, let me give you a demo of how this works. So pretend that I am onboarding a new hire and I want them to complete this document. This document is an I-9 and um, it's a document that all new hires need to complete before they can start work in the United States. As you can see, my document is set up as a DocuSign template. And if you haven't watched my training on how to create a DocuSign template, make sure you do that. So I'm in my template and as you can see here in my recipient workflow, I've chosen for the candidate the in-person signer action. I haven't specified the name of the candidate since this is going to change for each candidate. However, I'm going to add my details as the host since I will always be hosting the signing session in this particular example. Now on that note, the host must be an active user of your company's DocuSign an account. And if you don't see the option to add the in-person signer from your from this drop down here, it's because your account isn't provisioned with the option, or maybe your account isn't at least a DocuSign standard subscription tier, which is, I think, the second pricing DocuSign. You can have a mix of in-person signer and remote signers in your workflow. For example, here, I will be signing, countersigning this document once the candidate has signed their part of the i9, and I will be signing remotely. It's kind of funny because I'm using my own device, but I'm not going to set myself as an in-person signer because I will be receiving the email invitation to complete invitation to sign. Also, I'm starting from a template here. You could definitely use that feature if you were creating your envelope from scratch without a template too. So now let's go ahead and save this template and we'll use it to create an envelope. 
I'm going to select my i9 and then I will add the name and email of my candidate. I'll say that my candidate is called Bob Smith, good old Bob, and then I'll just press send. And as you can see, as soon as I press send, even though I'm not the person signing, DocuSign is offering me to sign now. I think actually this is a bug because it should really say you want to start the signing session. I'll click on sign now. The reason DocuSign is prompting me to sign now is because it knows that this is my email address and I'm about to host a signing session. So I'll click on sign now. Um, I would also receive a DocuSign email notification, but if I weren't the post if i was signing this document and someone else was hosting the session let me show you what the email looked like here is the email notification that i've also received since i'm the host so it doesn't say please review and complete you you'd know that it says send you a document to host for an in-person signing session if i click on this link i'll then be prompted to pass control of the document to the signer bob smith so i'll confirm and click on continue and from here the signing experience is exactly the same as you you already used to now i'm not going to complete the document for the purpose of this demo but the signing session is exactly the same as usual once bob has signed the document from there i as the employer will receive an email notification from docusign inviting me to sign because i also have fields on the second page of this document in the next video i will show you how you can use the specify recipient action how it works and what workflows i can help you streamline and if you'd like our help with DocuSign, you can schedule a strategy session with one of our consultants using the link in the description of this video. Our services include templates, databases, and integration development to help you automate all your workflow. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.